The flattest water, the bluest sky and a boat for lunch. Today will be a meeting of old friends. But perfect as it is out here, there's an undercurrent. Time is running out. Just ask the mother. There's a lot of hope out there, but it never comes fast enough. That's the problem, because these boys decline so fast. There are four main players at lunch. The two professors, Sue Fletcher and Steve Wilton, from the Perrin Institute of Translational Science, the mother, Terry Ellsworth, from Pittsburgh, and Billy, who's 16 and a half, and sharp as a tack. Air sharks would have eaten jaws. Really? Ja jaws is a bit soft. It's a robot. <laughs> Duchenne muscular dystrophy has shaped and sized Billy Ellsworth. And Duchenne, the cruelest disease for young boys, is the undercurrent in this story. When Billy was four years old, Terry Ellsworth already suspected the worst for her son. I read about Duchenne and I thought, oh my goodness, this is Billy. He fit the mold to everything. Very simple things, mm. very, very simple things. Five things, you know, trouble walking, jumping, climbing, skipping, falls a lot, enlarged calves, very simple things, mm. but he fit it. And I thought, he has Duchenne. So when the neurologist said, Okay, folks, his exact words, let's cut to the chase. We're 99% sure it's Duchenne. Um, we didn't hit the floor because we had cried our eyes out, you know, the week before we went to that appointment because it's a devastating um, diagnosis. It's horrible. And, uh, but we already knew it was Duchenne before we went in there. But 12 years ago, at the time of Billy's diagnosis, West Australian research into muscular dystrophy was well established. A drug developed by Steve Wilton and Sue Fletcher was trialled in America and in 2016 was given accelerated approval by the FDA. The results were tangible. My life is not the typical douche and life. My, my son can dress himself, feed himself, brush his own teeth, turn himself in bed, toilet himself, lift a book, carry his dishes to the sink. So I, even though I read, I'm very active on social media, I read daily, you know, my friends' experiences where they have to turn their boys in bed five, six, ten times a night. I hear it and I read it and I understand it, but that's not my life. Because Billy, like he said, he said last week to some media, or the week before, he said, I think I have a pretty, pretty typical teenage life. That's remarkable. So what's that? It's a marker. Oh. So when you're actually sailing into a river, the green is on your right-hand side. Well, Billy graduates high school in two years. And if he stays on this course, I expect to see him walk across the stage to receive his high school diploma. That's what I expect if he stays the course. Free food, Seagull! Get your bread! There he goes. Billy, in America, is able to stay the course because, in America, he has access to the drug. His fellow Duchenne sufferers in Australia do not yet have that chance. And Terry Ellsworth wants to help change that. All these scientists and doctors that have dedicated their careers, they helped my son. And we want to help the other boys. We want to make sure the boys here now in Australia can have access to the drug. Because Billy's living proof that there is help out there. Falling off his shoulder. What was that? <clears throat> oh, just a... I thought we hit something. Ah, oh, just a boat bouncing sharks. around on the bottom. Wait, there could be sharks. When you come to Perth and you see people like Sue mm -hmm. and Steve, mm -hmm. what are your feelings towards them? Uh, they, they'll never know how much... You can much, tell them now. I know. They'll never know how much we appreciate them. I think 
You know, and I told Steve the other day, I said, you need to know that parents adore you and Sue, and they do. You know, when they knew we were coming over here, they said, tell Steve and Sue hi, tell them we love them, tell them thank you. I mean, if it weren't for them, we wouldn't be, Billy wouldn't be walking. And they dedicated 20, 25 years, 30 years on this. So they should feel very special, in my opinion, that their, their hard work paid off. I think that's a huge accomplishment. It should, you know, we love them and they should feel very I think she proud. can see that. Oh. And I mean it. I mean every word of it. The Perrin Institute has in its full name two words, translational science. What this means is that researchers in labs work directly to meet the needs of patients in the clinic. It's a two-way process. Scientists, clinicians and patients are connected. And, like today on the boat, it can be personal. Thank you. There's more hope now than ever. I mean, this is not the end all, the cure all. Um, they're gonna need a cocktail of drugs, you know, therapy to help them, but it's happening. It's coming. We're going to see it in our lifetime, I believe. Should the Perrin Institute ever need a reason for being, it need look no further than Billy Ellsworth and his mum, Terry, from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania.